I have a couple of uh, scriptures I would like to read. And the first is it's in Isaiah, Isaiah 55, and it's from verses uh, 1 to 9. I'll give you time just to maybe look it up. O everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he um, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Come ye buy wine and milk without money, without price. Therefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labours for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delighteth in its fatness. Incline thy ear, and come to me, and hear, and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And it, behold, I will give him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation, and that, that thou knowest not the nation that they knew not, they shall run unto thee, because the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, shall glorify thee. And seek thee the Lord, while he may be found, and call upon him while he is near. And let their wicked forsake his way, and the righteous man his thoughts, and let him return on the Lord. And we will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And the next portion I'd like to read is in Luke, uh, Luke chapter 19, and it's verses 1 to 9. And as Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus looked up to the place, he looked up and saw and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today... I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and come down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that was a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I will restore him fourfold. And the Lord said unto, said unto him, This day of salvation come unto this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. And just the last portion is just in Mark, Mark 10, and it's just verses 46 to 52. And that's just with regard to Bartimaeus. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho there uh, with his disciples, there was a great number of, of people. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of uh, Timotheus, uh, sat at the, the, high, the highway side begging. And when he had heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have, have mercy, mercy upon me. And, he, and they charged him that he should hold his peace. And he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, has mercy, mercy upon me. And Jesus stood still and commanded, commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, I've called thee. And that's all I'd like to read. Uh, my thoughts this evening with regard to uh, what we'll look to look at, it's just the salvation of God and my thoughts tonight is the message the first message of Isaiah was God's great salvation and in Hebrew uh, 
the translation with regard to Isaiah is the salvation of Jehovah. And the main theme of the, the book of Isaiah is the salvation from the Lord. And Isaiah, the, the word salvation in Isaiah occurs 26 times throughout his prophecy. Um, Isaiah is believed to have lived 500, 500 BC. And one of the key phrases in the book of Isaiah, the divine title, the Holy One of God. And the first part of Isaiah from 1 to 39 depicts God's man's tremendous need of salvation. Uh, and that's really what the first part of the meeting, the plan to speak on. And then in chapters 40 to 66, it gives God, God graces, God's graces provision for it. And then I'd like to look then with regard to God's call, seek ye the Lord where he may be found. I was thinking tonight with regard to man's greatest need, you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of Adam's sin, all were made sinners. And this is the greatest need in our age. And it states in Romans, where, whereby as one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for all have sinned. And it clearly states in the word of God that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And tonight we need to be reconciled back to God. We're not right with God. And God knows what each one of us requires tonight. And we need a saviour. And God has provided a man. And he's provided this great provision. As it says in John 4 and 14. The father sent the son to be the saviour of the world. And, it's going, and, and tonight this is great, the greatest gift. You're not saved that you could ever receive. And you need to. That this gift you need to receive it. And I was thinking, you know, you need a saviour. If you're not saved in the, in the meeting tonight, uh, you need a saviour because there's nothing we can do or earn or merit to attain salvation ourselves. As it says in Ephesians 4, by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And we are solely dependent on God. But there's nothing we can do to work or to merit with regard to ourselves to attain salvation. And I was thinking even with regard to position and light of uh, God, you know, God cannot look upon sin. And it says, you know, have a cook. First, uh, or chapter 1 and 13, it says, they are pure eyes and behold evil, and they cannot look upon iniquity. And I was thinking with regard to even this week, with regard to Isaiah, you know, Isaiah got a, a vision of the Holy One of God. And this is the one who would be your saviour tonight. And this is the one who's offering you the free gift of salvation. And, he, and it says, And they cried one upon another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And I think of Isaiah's response. You know, Isaiah's response was, he said, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am an, a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For, I, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And we need to be as I in the meeting tonight. We need to see our possession, how God, you know, see how God sees us, that we're just guilty held as urban sinners in his sight. And as, you know, God has provided a substitute, a sacrifice for us. He's made a provision for us. As it says, the Lord Jesus became our substitute at Calvary. And it says, Isaiah 53 and verse 6. For all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to our own way. But the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us, of us all. And I think at, at Calvary, the Lord took upon him our sin at Calvary's cross. We've all gone astray. We've all strayed away from God. And God has provided a provision for us tonight. He's provided a provision at the, cro at the cross of Calvary. And I think even with the guardian Isaiah, Isaiah foretold with regard to Christ's birth and on God's grace he will provide a saviour to all mankind and we have a God who desires that all men to be saved we see in, in Timothy verse chapter 2 verse 1 for God who will have all men to be saved to come to the knowledge of, of the truth and God's desire for you tonight is for you to be saved and we have a saviour God and Christ died on Calvary's cross to be your substitute and I think even with regard to the Apostle Paul, where you say, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I think with regard to, in the meeting tonight, we're looking at, you know, God's, 
greatest provision and there's God's greatest gift. You know, God has given the gift of his beloved son at Calvary's cross to die for us. And the same in Isaiah, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a, ch- a, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And it says, For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. God has provided a Saviour for us, God's greatest provision. And we think even with regard to when the Lord, Jesus, when he came into the world, it says, They brought forth the firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and brought him, laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. And I would like to ask tonight, there was no room for Christ. And it's a room, and this is a room in your life for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a room for, for him. And I think of what the words, you know, it speaks of with regard to Isaiah. It speaks of with regard to love and joy and hope and purpose in this world. And you think of this, t- this time of year where we'll look at all given with regard to gifts. And the greatest gift you could ever receive is God's beloved son in this meeting tonight. And God knows what you have need of. And I think God has provided the greatest gift ever to mankind. And that's his only begotten son. And you could have it tonight if you would only trust him as your saviour. And you think of the verse, For God's love the world that gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's a verse that's quoted week in and week out. And it's the simplicity of the gospel where the son, the, the, the God gave his beloved son at Calvary to die for your sins and God provided a sac- God provided his son as a saviour and I would like to speak with regard to the night as, as basically as the greatest gift as, this is God's unspeakable gift and a few thoughts on the gift it's a priceless gift and it's a gift to free to all in the meeting tonight and it provides satisfaction. It says in the verse, you know, in Zion verse 1, it says, O everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye and buy, and eat. Yeah, come and buy wine, and milk without money, without price. This is God's free gift. He's offering it free for all. And this, will, this, this is a gift. You'll never thirst again. And you think of this great provision that God's provided for you tonight, and it, it cost him everything. And he's offering you it free tonight. And he's offering you it free at this moment. And this gift will not always be free. You think of not one of us can guarantee tomorrow. And we're living in a world where you have a relatively short time to make a decision. And I think, what is your life? It's a vapour that even appears for a little time. That appears for a little time and then vanishes away. We have a short time with regard in this world. And you need to make a decision. And God's calling you now. God's calling you. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And he's calling you now with regard to your, your soul, with regard to putting your trust in him for salvation. There's only a short time. And I think, I was thinking this week, like, we are living in a, a period of tremendous uncertainty. And you think with regard to even the past two years, with regard to, you know, with the COVID, COVID-19, and now there's wars and rumours of wars with regard to the wars that's going on. And I think now we're in a cost of living crisis. And this world is ever changing and nothing is certain. And we're, you know, we're coming to a day of the end of grace and you know, it can't go on much longer. You know, one of these days the Lord will come again. And again, if the Lord comes again, what that, what's that going to mean for yourself? And God's offering you salvation in this meeting for all, if you'll only come. And tonight you can have a sure and a firm foundation and know of your sins forgiven. And God's salvation, you'll know you'll have a home in heaven. As it says in Isaiah, words for a sure foundation, where it says, I kneel in a sure place that cannot fail. And the Lord Jesus Christ has died for your sins, and the works have been fully accomplished at Calvary's cross. And he sits at the Lord's, he sits at the Father's right hand. And the next book, just verse 6, and I was looking at that with regard to God's, God's call. This is God's call. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call upon him while he is near. And this is the message with regard to an Isaiah's day, and it's the exact same message for you this afternoon. And part of this verse, you sort of see it says, Seek ye and call ye. It's part of a couplet. 
and God is, is a very challenging verse, so it is. And within this verse, God's looking for a response for you tonight. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. This is God's invitation to you tonight. And as I as well, the first chapter says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And God's appealing to you tonight, Come. And God's offering you his unspeakable gift tonight. And we have a saviour God who will have all men to be saved. And God's, this is God's desire for you tonight. And God's inviting you tonight. He says, come unto me, the Lord Jesus' words. Come unto me, all you that labour and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And there's a warning in this message. It says, while you may be found. You know, there's, a, there's an urgency with that this message. And I ask you tonight, do you have a desire to be saved? And if you do have a desire to be saved, come to the Saviour without delay. Don't neglect it. And as it says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. And you think of a strive and you need to exert yourself. You need to endeavour. And if you're ever going to be saved, you have to put the matter of salvation first. You know, we have to clear your schedule. That has to be above everything. And God's not going to take second place. And if you're desired to be saved, you must put him first. And if you're to trust the Lord today, you can be sure of salvation. And as I said, as I spoke with sure Mary, you spoke with a sure foundation. And you think of all the certainty in this world today, you can be, you know, you can have a sure foundation, a firm foundation, know your sins are forgiven, and know you've got salvation, and know you'll have a home in heaven. And you think of sure dwellings you'll have a home in heaven and you think with regard heaven and earth shall pass away but my word will never pass away God's word is sure we have a God tonight in the meeting that cannot lie and you can rest on the finished work you know the Lord Jesus Christ has died for your sins at Calvary's cross and if you only rest in his finished work take God at his word you know God has sent to meeting for God's love for the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life and he, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. You can have it present possession. You can have it tonight if you'd only but trust him. I'm going to quite not take up too much time. Uh, I was thinking just two men that, that looked to respond at the call and made two men with regard to uh, Zacchaeus and blind Bartimaeus. Uh, and these two men were in Jericho and this was brought before the Lord was going to the cross. And these two men, they were getting their last opportunity. And as it says, as Jesus passed through Jericho, there was a man named Zacchaeus, and he was a he was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he was a tax collector. He's probably one that you would probably never assume it's likely for him to be saved. But he sought to see Jesus for he was little of stature. He he sought to see Jesus. And he realised he had a problem. And he realised there was nothing that there was a problem he was going to have to overcome. And if you, have you ever a problem you have to overcome? If there's something that you're putting in front of salvation, you need, to, you need to deal with it. And we think, you know, it's a case overcome it. He ran before and climbed up on this sycamore tree. And he had his desire. He had his desire to see Jesus. For he knew that Jesus was to pass that way. And Zacchaeus had an urgency and he sought to trust. He sought to, to see Jesus. And if you're ever going to get saved, you need to have a desire. You need to have a desire and you need to seek the Lord while you may be found. You need to put it in front of everything. You need to put it first. And if, the, if, uh, if Zacchaeus had to decide to leave this until tomorrow, if he had to procrastinate it, you would have never read about Zacchaeus and the word of God. And if you keep putting salvation off, you may never be saved. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And we think of when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and he said unto Zacchaeus, Make haste and come come down, for today I must abide at thy house. You have to come down. You have to come down. You have to deal away with all your pride. And before you're ever going to be saved, until you come down and realise you're a sinner and you need a saviour. And he said, He made haste and come down and received him joyfully. And Jesus said unto him, this day of salvation come to thy house and last just with regard to Bar Bartimaeus Bartimaeus was the same the first man was seeking 
And the next one, he called upon the Lord while he was near. And I think of Bartimaeus. You know, Bartimaeus was in Jericho, and again, probably the last time the Lord would ever be. He was in the way to the cross. There was nothing he could do himself. And Bartimaeus knew his condition. Bartimaeus knew he was blind. And he knew, you know, he also had a desire. And he knew he had to seek the Lord. And when he heard that Jesus was in Nathras, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And you think with regard to the crowd, and all people hold you back, and you think the charge them more to hold their peace, and the crowd with a more of a great, great deal, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And basically mercy means that God's withheld his judgment from us, that was our due, and he's laid it on his son. And the word would hold you back from being saved. But you think of Bartimaeus, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't deterred. He cried with the more, with a great deal. And this man was earnestly saved. And he realised he was lost. And he realised he had an opportunity within his reach. And he grasped it. And if the gospel is at your door tonight, and you have a saviour who's died, and provisions be made for you, and if he's calling you tonight, and the saviour's near, don't miss the opportunity. And the Lord stood still and called him on himself. And are you going to reject calls, God's call tonight? And I just asked with regard, you know, if you'd forsake your own way of thinking and you'd, you'd just come to the Lord Jesus tonight and accept him as your saviour. And I'll just not take any more of David's time. Thank you. Uh, would you turn with me first of all sorry, to the book of Ezekiel just a couple of verses Ezekiel sorry, chapter 33 Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 7 so thou O son of man I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I said unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou should not speak and warn the wicked from his ways. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. It just shows you that there is a responsibility in the preaching of the gospel. It's not just uh, out of choice or the flight of fancy. But anything or anyone who stands on a gospel platform to preach the message of the gospel or responsible to God you turn over to uh, sorry 2nd Kings chapter 7 if I can find it 2nd uh, Kings I'll just uh, it's a wee verse or a few words that I had written down one phrase Second Kings chapter seven verse three. One phrase: Why sit we here until we die? Galatians chapter two. Galatians chapter two and verse twenty. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live; yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And Luke chapter 15, please, finally. Luke chapter 15. And reading from verse 17. <clears throat> And when he had come to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare? 
and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. I love this. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the, fa- but the father said unto the servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat. And be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. We trust that God will add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. Uh, I have three wee titles to put on these scriptural readings. In Ezekiel chapter 32, we have a people that were warned. The servant was told from God to warn people. Every time you sit under the sound of the gospel, you're warned by the speaker from God. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. We have a Savior willing to die. And Luke chapter 15. We have a Son that wanted forgiveness. Simple, but we trust searching by the grace of God. A people that were warned. As we've already heard, we're now living in the closing days of the dispensation of grace. And honestly, and I get up each morning and I think to my own soul, maybe today, because there's nothing really left for the child of God in this world. It's sadness, it's sickness, as we've already heard, wars and rumors of wars. The Bible tells us that the days in which we're now living are just the same as it was before the flood. Marriage, given a marriage, and there's nothing but rottenness and Men go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Ezekiel tells us that the man was to warn the people. Because the wicked man, he's heading for destruction. And God, God's telling Ezekiel, warn them from me. Because he doesn't want them going down into a lost sinner's hell to be in conscious damnation for eternal ages and if that's what the Bible says then that's what the Bible means and whether you like it or you don't like it it is the truth of the word of God this is why God sent his own son we read in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 of a saviour that was willing to die. Of the Son of God, you know, all the believers love this verse. The Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We can never get over the wonder 
of the love of God. Jonathan has already quoted John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is true, but have everlasting life. Now, can I ask you this? Now, ask your own soul this. Is there anyone or any person that you would be willing to suffer eternal punishment for? I remember, friends, I actually used to work with a man. And he told me this. I couldn't believe my ears. He says, I love my wife so much that I would go to hell for her. I thought that was awful. He's still not saved. And I asked you, brother, sister, your friends in the meeting tonight, and we're delighted to see you. And pray God that will bless you and save your precious soul before it's eternally too late. A saviour willing to die. I can never comprehend the love that brought the Son of God to planet Earth, that he himself brought into formation, allowed himself to be taken by wicked hands, crucified and slain. But God raised him from the dead. I often think of the words of Hebrews, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, to serve the living God, to have that conscience of yours at peace, and to be able to lay your head upon the pillow at night, knowing if the Lord should return, it will be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Rise up to meet him in the air, and look into the face of the blessed man. He paid sin's debt for you and for me. At the face called Calvary. Tonight. Almost Christmas. You can know your name written in the Lamb's book of life. My Bible says. Repentance towards God. And faith on our Lord Jesus Christ. How do I get saved? A son that wanted forgiveness. You know that we've read of the prodigal. I will arise and go to my father. He realizes the situation that he's in. Is nothing to eat. <coughs> Pardon me. Is <coughs> no money. For he spent all his living and all his money on ratless living. And the Bible says he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine that ate. And no man gave unto him. And he thought about his father's house back home. His father's servant, servants had plenty. His brother had plenty. If he'd still been there, he would have had plenty. But now, his belly is empty. He has no clothes on his back worth talking about. Can I ask you, how does that find your soul? Are you in want? If someone were to ask you the personal question, would you choose Christ tonight? If, if you knew that the Lord was coming Tomorrow, if you knew he was coming tomorrow, would you trust him tonight? I don't know. The Bible doesn't give a date. But maybe he will. A son that wanted forgiveness. The Bible says, I love this. The Bible says the father saw him afar off. The second sinner. And the second saviour, saviour, always meet. 
always me. Do you turn your back upon a godless world? What is repentance, somebody asks? Repentance means 180 degrees turn. Taking sides against with God against yourself as repentance. Turn your back on the world and going after God. That's repentance. Towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. How do I get saved? Well I can't I can't help. One of the simplest uh, written renderings of God's salvation I'm going over the time I'll take it as quickly as I can was I believe God it says of Abraham that he, he believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness I can't help but think of my own situation you'll bear with me I remember the night before I got saved. I pictured myself at the great white throne judgment, which is where you'll be if you never get saved. And the books were opened. And the book of life was opened. And if your name is not found written in the book of life. You're cast into the lake of fire. And that scared me. That scared me. Taken by the angels and cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 21 says, And the fearful and unbelieving that is, I believe, those that are afraid to trust Christ. And I don't know why, when God has given the best of heaven to die for us, undeserving sinners, but he did because he so loved the world. He so loved the likes of me and you. Tonight, you believe God and rest where God has rested in the finished work and precious shed blood and the Holy Spirit will enter and you'll be born of God. It's just take God at his word and rest where God has rested. What does he get? What did the son get when he returned home to the father? It says Bring him the best robe, a robe of righteousness. We never had our own righteousness, but God will clothe you in his righteousness. A ring on his hand, everlasting love. And shoes on his feet, he didn't have any. A new standing in Christ. I tell you, the world can give nothing like God's salvation. Change your life and change your destiny. I know the joy and the peace of sins forgiven and peace with God. I trust that God will bless these few stammering remarks. And our heart's desire and our prayer to God for you is that you might be saved even tonight.